The other day, Kevin did an interview with Charles Barkley, and I'm walking by the camera, and I give Kevin a pound, and I hear Charles Barkley go, is that climbing? Man, great job. I was like, I didn't make money in my 20s. I hustled. I was obsessed with the hip hop impresarios of the time, and I got myself into the music business. And I was managing this artist, Wale, from DC, and Wale and Kevin had grown up together, and Kevin was going to a Jay Z concert at the Garden. And I'm a big Hoop fan, so I obviously knew who KD was. And Wale asked me if I would help KD, like, just acclimate himself when he walked into the Garden. So I met him, and we did hit it off that night. You know, Kevin fed off my energy, and I obviously was just enamored with him because of how great he was. When we started to talk about swagger, I mean, we really had no expectation. It wasn't swagger in our minds. What it was was that Kevin's rec center was such an important part of his childhood. And as I got to learn more about him and his friends and his family, so many of these stories took place at this rec center. And it wasn't just basketball. You're not just building ball players. You're building young men. It was these like amazing stories of like, get them in trouble, having their mom come and take them home. If you don't take those cuffs off my son, I will have your bags. And the girl that they liked and the socials that they had in there. And then we had the opportunity to spend some time with Brian Grazer and we were both so inspired by Friday Night Lights. So it was just like knowing that like Kevin Durant, he came into his own in that rec center. And it was just so amazing to me. I've been a diehard Knicks fan since I was born. When the Knicks lost in the playoffs, year after year in the late 80s and 90s, my world was over. I would sleep with certain things that I had slept with the night before because it was good luck. I went to Nick games, I waited outside to get autographs, like to cut pictures out of the yearbook and put them all over my walls. I just love being in Madison Square Garden. I say all that to say that, you know, I'm a Net fan now. Unfortunately, everything has to take a back seat now because just like I was a Warrior fan and Thunder fan, I'm a Net fan. There'll be a time in my life where I'll healthily root for both of them and Kevin's long gone, but obviously, like, you know, when my man's here in Brooklyn, that's my team. Sarah Sauce. You're never leaving New York. Yeah, never, ever. I find like comfort in the city and I find comfort in the sounds and the noises. I love that there's people out all the time and everybody's like in this city, in this backdrop. Without fail, I get energized by it. During the pandemic, we had been so unstimulated in so many ways and like, how are we gonna acclimate ourselves now, right, to the real world? All you gotta do is walk down the streets of New York City and it's all back. I think I take a lot of pride when I can tell people that I'm from here, so because of that, I can't go. Thank <laughs> you.